I'm interested in the Empress Dowager, and can you tell me, how did she rise to power? What is she known for? The Empress Dowager Cixi was in power in China from the 1860s to the early 1900s. She was a concubine of the Xianfeng Emperor, and during the reign of her son, the Tongzi Emperor, and her nephew, the Guangxu Emperor, she was the power behind the throne. She was powerful because of the men who were in power. One of the aspects of art patronage that Cixi had a reputation for was her enthusiasm for fashion and her her incredibly beautiful embroidered robes that she had the Imperial Bureau of Embroidery commissioned for her. Does the design of the robe have any cultural significance? So after somebody would notice the brilliant color that was reserved only for the highest levels of royalty, they would start to see other details in this dress that show us other aspects of wishes for good fortune and power. Um, one of those is that geometric design that you see repeated over and over and again in blue on the yellow. And that's actually a stylized character for longevity. Another motif that you see in the ribbons are these beautiful little bats. Now this is a really clever pun because the word for bat, bian fu, or fu, sometimes in more ancient texts, is a homophone for the word for blessings or fortune. It's interesting, we don't have symbols on our clothes, our politicians don't have symbols on their clothes per se, but we do use symbols such as the American flag or the Colorado flag that candidates wear to say to people, I'm one of you, and we're all in this together. I'm really curious, Sheila, is there Something that you particularly advise women on in politics about the language that they speak through their own clothing choices? So yes, women project, want to project an image of strength, but also femininity. You'll see women in strong colors, reds, blues, suits, projected professionalism versus a sleeveless dress that may project, I'm, I belong to a country club. But they also have to show that through their actions, that they're, they can be strong leaders. That's really interesting to hear. You know, even though Cixi lived in an era where masculinity and femininity were really emphasized, she also adopted certain actions that were coded as masculine to show her power as the unofficial emperor of China. But there's actually a couple examples at the Denver Art Museum that we can use to look at this work that Cixi was doing. One of these is the examples of the porcelain that we have. Before Cixi, porcelain production was always something that the emperor was in charge of. Another example that we can see is Cixi's production of painting and calligraphy. These were deeply valued among male literati culture in China. And for Cixi to produce her own painting and calligraphy to then give to ministers at court, she was following in the tradition of generations of emperors who used this to bestow their favor and power. This really sticks out to me. Can you tell me more about these red marks on this piece? Cixi decided that she wanted to become an even better painter. So she sent out a request for the best female painter in China to come and be her teacher. And her teacher has gone through with red ink and circled all the good places and written some notes on ways that Cixi could improve. So we've looked at a couple different examples today of how Cixi communicated and created her self-image. We saw how she communicated through her fashion, her power. We saw how through painting and porcelain and calligraphy, she took masculine coded things and used them to show that she was the unofficial emperor, even as a woman. I'm wondering, do we see echoes of this or aspects of this still relevant today for powerful women in politics? What the Empress Dowager had to do to manage her power and to rise in power uh, during her reign is very similar to what people, uh, women especially, have to do today. And the way women have to appropriate men's behaviors to manage power and to get into power versus being judged on how smart they are, their public policy decisions. They have to worry about if their hair is correct or their clothes are correct and what kind of image they're projecting to the people. I think it's more difficult now because of all the different 
uh, social media platforms that are always on you. But it, there is a direct correlation and we should be asking ourselves, why haven't we progressed further than we have?